gonna start another video journal. Uh, uh, uh. I'm starting another video journal because the last one was such a success. Such a sucks ass. Uh. Well, I'm starting one anyway. I thought, you know, maybe a new video journal would give me a reason to live. Maybe that would give me a purpose. I'd be like, oh, I can't kill myself yet. I have to do another installment on my video journal. That seems like about the stupidest reason to continue living. Because you gotta make a video journal? I don't know. I don't know, man. But hey, whatever works. Whatever works. My mom doesn't care if it's the stupidest reason. She just wants me to not kill myself. The government doesn't care if it's a trivial, useless, idiotic reason. The government just wants me to maintain... Be a cog in our machine. Keep producing. When I think about it logically, you know, the universe, the world, just a bunch of stuff. It's just a collection of things and stuff. And then I think about what am I contributing and subtracting from the equation? Yeah? I mean, as a human being, as an American, no less, great big American human being, I am using up all kinds of resources every day. I'm using stuff up, creating waste. We don't need extra of that. There's plenty of it. So, just existing doesn't seem inherently worthwhile. What do I give that is so important that justifies my waste? My destruction of the global environment. I don't know, what do I give? I make some awesome songs and some okay art, but the world doesn't give one shit. I don't know that it's helping anyone. Day to day, I give angry, hateful feelings to the people around me, my community, <laughs> society. Nah, nah, not helpful, not helpful. I don't know. I just don't, I don't think suicide is as bad as people think it is. I think maybe some more people took a long, hard look at their lives and know, weighed the pros and cons, maybe there's not that much to live for. Maybe we could do with some, we could do with some fewer, oh pardon me, now it's all foggy or some shit. Did I, did I just grease this up? God damn it. We could do with fewer miserable curmudgeons in the world. Right? Maybe not. It does look, it looks fogged up now. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't, I, all right, I did. I greased it. I greased it with my filthy thumb germs. Okay, that looks better. Mm -mm -mm. My, my two male role models in life are both dead. So they can't convince me not to kill myself. Not anymore. Look at this, um... This is the earliest journal entry that I have. This is... This is January 20th, 2001. All the, uh, journals that I had prior to this one, I... burned. In a... crazy ritualistic ceremony 
a long time ago. Prior to 2001. I don't know when it was. Okay, let's, let's, let's just, let's hear the beginning of this. So, what do you suppose you're reading here? What sort of story is this? Is it a story of redemption? An escape from hell? Or is it a cautionary tale of self-destruction? The Chronicles of a Doomed Man. Or maybe, worst of all, it's a pointless, resolutionless little dribble of redundancy and boredom. That would be the most depressing of the three, I think, and probably the easiest to write. Good point, me, from 12 years ago or whatever. It is easy to live a pointless, boring, redundant existence. Not that the story's over. Not yet. But it's definitely not an escape from hell. There could be a twist coming, but if anything, it, is, it has been a descent. A s fairly steady march further and further into hell over the past 12 years. Oh, it's been a wretched decade. Awful. Absolutely awful. I mean, gosh. If it's any indication of the times to come, I really should kill myself as soon as possible. Because it has been awful. And the physical pain... Oh my gosh, I never expected to feel so much physical pain all the time. So, okay. It's not an escape from hell. Not yet. A cautionary tale of self-destruction? That's possible. I keep trying to do the things that they tell me to do to not self-destruct. <sighs> Exercise. Eat right, do yoga, practice art, and blah 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 blah. I do, I do it. And somehow, life just shits worse and worse all over me. Stop shitting all over me, life. Well, okay, this has been great. It's been a really good... Ah, smacked my chin. This has been a great first installment of my new video journal. Ah! This is gonna be it. This is gonna be the one. I can feel this is the project that's gonna whoop, turn my life right around. I'm proud to be alive. Because I worked so hard at it, I am proud to be American. Because I worked so hard at it, I am proud to be a straight white man. Because I worked so hard to be it, it was a choice. And I was like, yes, I am going to be that because it's awesome. I got a little flex of spittle on the computer screen now in my excitement. Eh. Eh. All right. Cut. Cut. Still flex of spittle. Flex and flex. All right, stop recording. Just, just hit the hit stop. Perhaps you can see, perhaps not, but the, uh, the skull is showing through in a, a lot of places now. You can see the skull. You can see that demon head's skull coming right out.
a water glass that I'd misplaced. It was tucked right down there on top of my receiver. Oh, right. It was suggested to me that I ought to put on clothes when I record these bits. So I figured, what the heck, I'll give it a try. Honestly, it's much too hot for clothes in this tiny, sweaty little room. But I'll concede for politeness sake. I realized that I had, in recent days, forgotten maybe not the meaning of life, the purpose of life. It's pretty simple, and I've known it for a long time, but I forget it all the time as well. It's simple, but it's not that easy, and it's not that um, accessible in the sense of being immediately useful a lot of the time. But anyway, okay, in case you were wondering, and you probably already know, <laughs> the meaning of life, maybe not the meaning, the purpose of life, is to be the embodiment of love, not in the sense of an emotion or some kind of romantic attachment. Love in the sense of a vibrational energy. We really don't have proper words for it in this language. I am ignorant to the rest of the world. Maybe there are words for it in other languages, but we only have the one word, love, to encompass a vast array of completely different concepts. But, no, this is love in the sense of an energetic force, okay? You can have it for plants, you can have it for people, you can have it for the sky, and you can receive it from the world around you. And yeah, the, the probably the best things about religion seem to basically say to be the embodiment of love that is the purpose of life. And with that is the knowledge that everything else is just happenstance. Your ambitions, your career, even your relationships to a degree, but to actually, to actually be the embodiment of love to receive and give love all the time. That's, well, let's just say it doesn't necessarily make me any less suicidal, just knowing that. Because it seems so far removed from my reality so much of the time. Okay. Okay. Eh? Do you like my shirt? It's, it's, it's new. Conditioner. If you're thinking of losing your mind, oh, and I know you already have. Uh, if I find my lost mind, and where is your mind? Claiming I already have. Uh, Sometimes I have a half a mind. Uh, 
have to mind to have a mind. Sometimes I even have to. I have to have half a mind. Have a mind to have a mind. There's a lot to think about. Once upon a time, I had quite a time having all of my mind. Thank you. That scares zombies. It makes her feel afraid. Sometimes she has to have a mind. Zombies is a half a mind. Thursday, June fourteenth, four PM. A correction to my previous video journal installment because it, it's been bothering me even as I said it live to the computer video camera I knew it wasn't correct and mm, anyway I said in spite of my best efforts, life keeps shitting all over me. That's what I said. It's not what I meant, and it's not accurate. It's all in perception. I know that. For every terrible thing about my current existence, there's a wonderful A1 thing. Come on, that's fundamental. What I meant to say was, no matter how much I attempt to <laughs> better myself, keep going and keep motivated, I continue to hate life and not enjoy it one bit. That is what I meant to say. Knowing that it is all perception isn't very reassuring in some cases. My brain has had its switches flipped willy-nilly on and off utter paranoid psychosis sedated barely conscious that's that's my favorite that's the way to be just floating Ooh. anyway I'm talking about the various medications that have been coursed through my system besides those I'm trying not to use those I'm really trying to avoid trying to avoid medical establishments trying to avoid pharmaceuticals. It's, um, it's not easy for myself, but I'm trying. Because they mess me up so bad. Anyway, even with those out of the picture, the idea of our minds, our consciousness, projecting and thus creating our own reality is not very reassuring to me. Because I don't seem to have much control. I try to practice. I try to practice the disciplines that they teach in terms of finding peace of mind and calming the mind. Anyway, I have the excuse that my brain is continually leaking all over itself. I've seen the pictures, I've seen lots of pictures of parts of my brain leaking fluids into other parts of my brain. That's where the uh, dye shows up when they use the contrast in an MRI. I can't control what switches are being flipped in my brain. It's leaking on itself. But at the same time, I'm phenomenally, phenomenally fortunate to have such spectacular control of my physical functions. Doctors don't understand it. They think I should be 
immobilized. Why isn't the medical scientific community rallying round to do tests on me? Pat it, pat it with the medical industry. However, for enough money, I will let you do things to my magic brain. For enough money, I will let you cut open my skull and take bits. It would have to be a lot of money, but if the price is right, you sons of bitches can cut my head right open. Mmm. In the meantime, ah. Uh, But the skin is almost all gone. Now the bloody meat is going away. And then we'll just have a nice clean skull. Like nature intended. Kill all demon heads and clean their shiny white skulls. Like it says in the Bible. It is, it is June 22nd, Friday, June 22nd, 10 p.m. I just got released from the psycho ward. This afternoon at like uh, 1.15, I remember, because I had to write it on the discharge papers. I'll tell you about it sometime. They put me on lith lithium. They put me on lithium this time. It can make you slur your speech, but I think I'm just really tired. They put me on lithium. I, I really, I hate antidepressants. I really didn't want to go on anything. And I'd heard scary stuff about lithium lithium but actually quite a new experience for me i have never ever ever been put on an antidepressant that didn't immediately make me sick and give me lots of unpleasant side effects but this there have been virtually no side effects at all and it, to some degree it seems to be working already even though it's only been four days or something uh, well, what's what's working about it specifically, and this is really strange to me, but lithium in particular <laughs> is supposed to potentially have the effect of reducing suicidal thoughts. Seems like a really specific, particular attribute for a naturally occurring salt to possess, but ah, the wonders of nature. Yeah, so I like that I'm taking a naturally occurring, a naturally, a naturally, naturally occurring salt, as opposed to some synthetic stuff. Although, I'm sure it's still processed. It comes in colorful capsules. So, whatever. Um, no, right. My point. I'm kind of amazed. It, it uh, so far anyway. Within just like a couple of days, my suicidal thoughts had really diminished. Because so I'd been having them obsessively, just I couldn't stop thinking about suicide all the time. That was, well, that was why I went to the psych ward pretty much, but yeah, just looping through my head constantly. And uh, it just hasn't been, which is nice. It's so nice, actually. Uh, didn't realize just how unpleasant it is to be obsessively, compulsively fixated on suicide all the time, even if you're not necessarily acting on it. It's really unpleasant to think about non-stop. So, oh, it's, uh, it's nice to suddenly not be thinking about 
suicide every hour of every day. Obsessively. Compulsively. Hmm. Lithium. Also the first Nirvana song I ever really liked. So. Special request, Gwen. Gwen wanted something. <clears throat> Where is it? Nice and new and fresh. Now that's a little bit vague. I'm not sure what that means, but this is new in the sense that I only learned how to play it yesterday or started to try to learn to play it yesterday. It's new for me, and it's new in the sense that it's being made right now, which is as new as it can be, right? I mean, shit. Um, okay, it's not a new song. It's not a new song, no. But it, it had been running through my head and it seems apropos of my current situation in life. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, all right. Let's just give it a shot, man. Let's just, let's just give this thing a shot. Say fairly well. 
don't think twice, cause it's alright.